Jumping into the number five spot of the best gaming mechanical keyboards is the Asus ROG Strix Scope 2, coming in at a price tag of $179.99. If you want to check out any of the five keyboards in this video, there's Amazon links below, 40 US, UK, Canada, and international links, but let's jump into the Scope 2. Now, $179.99 is not cheap, but that is one of the most expensive keyboards on this list. So if you are looking for something in a little bit of a better price range, well, just keep watching. But the Scope 2 is a very good keyboard. For form factor, this is a 96% or 1800 form factor. So you still keep your function keys and number pad. Very solid build quality here. This has a thick top metal plate, then a plastic bottom shell with nice glossy accents. The wheel on the top right also feels very high quality with nice tactile bumps. There's also a button next to that to change the function of the wheel from RGB brightness, volume, and other things like that. But very easy to figure out and highly intuitive. That also has little icons on the actual keyboard itself so you know what the scroll wheel is doing, um, which really, really nice and it works quite well. Now, as for dampening, there is foam between the plate and the PCB as well as a switch dampening pad. That is pretty cool to see because, I mean, before we would have assumed that's only in the custom keyboard industry, but now Asus is doing that to their keyboards and the result is a keyboard that sounds a lot more like a custom, feels a lot more like a custom than, well, any previous gaming keyboards have. So very cool there. And one last thing with the build quality is this comes with a magnetic wrist rest which is nice. Now for colors, this only comes in one colorway, which is black. But again, this uses typical cherry stems on those keycaps so you can put any keycap you want on this keyboard. So you can customize it that way. But let's talk about switches here. Asus has used a lot of different switches in the past, but now they're getting it really, really right. These are factory lubed ROG snow linear switches, or you can also get the storm switches, which are tactiles. Now I obviously got the snows, which are the linears. The switches here are incredibly impressive coming from Asus. As far as smoothness, these are very, very, very smooth. And I'm not even overdoing that. They did a great job. Very little stem wobble and incredibly smooth. The only cons really with these switches are two things. And one of them is just personal preference. I think they're a little bit too heavy. That's just me though. But the biggest problem is inconsistencies with the factory lubing, where most of the switches are totally fine and they feel actually pretty good. Some of the switches are way over lubed. And I don't mean a little bit over lubed, they're way over lubed. So the Pitch sounds a lot different. The bottom out feels a lot different and it's pretty dang noticeable. This was probably five to six switches. So not a massive deal, but when you are paying massive money for a keyboard, you don't really want inconsistently lubed switches. However, I do think obviously it's still a great keyboard and something that you should definitely consider. Now, the last thing with the switches is it's fully hot swappable with three and five pin switches. So if you don't like the switches, you can swap them out. That's pretty cool. Although I think most of you, especially if you're gamers, will be happy with those linear switches. They are really, really quite smooth. For keycaps, these use double shot PBT shine through keycaps. They do have a texture to them. You do also get an extra space bar in the box, which does have a cool shine through Asus design on it. There is a tick on pretty much all of these stabilizers, but still, very slight when compared to what they used to be doing. So still very good for Asus, but yeah, you could modify them a little bit. Before we take a listen to the Scope 2 sound test, there will be a back-to-back -back sound test of every single keyboard at the end of the video. So make sure to stick around for that, but take a listen to the Scope 2. And that is how the Scope 2 sounds. Now for connectivity, this is either wired with a detachable USB type C. And for the wireless connectivity, it can either be Bluetooth or wireless with a 2.4 gigahertz USB dongle. That's what you're gonna wanna use to get that full 1000 hertz pulling rate if you wanna be gaming wirelessly. This also has fantastic battery life up to 1500 hours, but obviously that is going to be with RGB off. So if you have RGB on, it's going to be substantially less than that. Now as for RGB, very important for a gaming keyboard, we all know, RGB could be brighter. It's still attractive with the shine through keycaps to give that gamery vibe, but it's definitely not as bright when compared to others on the list, which is honestly a little bit surprising coming from Asus. But with that, let's move on to the number four spot, which is the Royal Kludge M75, coming in at a price tag of $124.99. This is now a 75% form factor, which is great to have all the keys basically that a TKL is gonna have, 
but now in an even smaller form factor. This uses a two-piece plastic shell with a metal knob, extra USB-C when in wired mode, and a small OLED screen in the bottom right. The knob has nice tactile bumps and great functionality. When you press in the knob, you can actually control the connectivity of the keyboard through the screen and I will say that the screen is fantastic. Like it is especially nice in its function. It is so user friendly. The interface is like perfect. It was just done incredibly well. The screen also shows battery percentage, your volume level, as well as whether you're using this for Mac or Windows, which I believe it automatically changes with the USB, which is actually very, very cool to change, well, whether it's control or command and like your Windows key and everything else. So that's nice. As for dampening, this is gasket mounted with foam between the polycarbonate plate and the PCB and a silicone switch dampening pad, then full silicone in the actual case itself. That's a lot of high quality dampening. This makes for a great sound. It's not everyone's personal preference for a sound because it's kind of a more muted, poppier sound, but I think it's really, really good overall and it sounds nice, but well, you'll hear that in a sound test. For the colorway, it's just this colorway, which is kind of that blue, purpley, I don't know if it's purple, but it's definitely its own colorway. Again, you can customize it pretty easily, but again, your own custom keycaps, but I think it looks good out of the box. As for switch options, you have a choice between browns, which are tactile, reds, which are linear, or speed silvers, which are linear and have that faster actuation that we expect. Obviously the speed silvers is what I recommend for gaming because you do have that faster actuation, which means you won't have to press down that key as much before it actuates, which is well quicker for gaming. Now the speed silvers are factory lubed. The switches here definitely have some scratchiness as you would expect from silver switches, but overall not that scratchy and it's nice and progressive feeling with a dual stage spring. This also has a good weight, especially for gaming. And overall, I'm pretty happy with these silver switches. Not amazing, but very, very good. And definitely in line with the price point. Now, if you did wanna swap out these switches and put your own switches in, well, it's fully hot swappable with three and five pin switches. So you can do that if you wish. As for keycaps, these are non-shine through keycaps. And I'm not sure exactly what the keycaps material is, but they seem to be PBT. Stabilizers are plate mounted and are greased from the factory. Very nicely tuned with no ticks or rattles. Pretty dang impressive here, but we do expect that because Royal Clutch has been getting much better with their stabilizer tuning, but don't take my word for it. Take a listen to the sound test. And that is how it sounds. Let's talk about connectivity. Firstly, you can connect this with a detachable USB type C wirelessly with Bluetooth or a 2.4 gigahertz USB dongle. And this has a fairly large 3,750 milliamp hour battery. So that's great. As for RGB, this reflects the RGB great. So it's very bright and vibrant. There's tons of modes, colors, perky lighting, everything that you would expect. And yeah, it's nice and bright. So if you did want to swap this on to having shine through keycaps, absolutely go for it. But with that, let's move on to the number three spot, which honestly kind of surprised me. And this is the Razer Black Widow V4. Coming in at a whopping price tag of $189.99, the most expensive keyboard on the list, but a great choice, especially if you are a Razer enthusiast and you want something very, very specific that you can customize, which is weird coming from Razer, but this actually fits that bill. Okay, so firstly, there's a 75% form factor. This has an aluminum top case with a plastic box bottom case that has Razer's build for gamers by gamers slogan printed all over it. There is a metal roller on the top that has a very nice tactile bumps that I absolutely love. I'm like not going to overdo that. The roller that Razer made on the like the top right, the single best that I've ever seen on any keyboard. It does better than a knob. While the knob does look really nice, this functionality so unbelievably good. Then it has two media buttons that are functional but have a little bit of wobble and that's right next to that Scroll wheel, absolutely love it. As for dampening, there is a ton here. Firstly, this is gasket mounted with pour on gaskets. Like all these gaming brands are now taking everything from custom keywords. It's so cool to see. Foam between the metal plate and the PCB and then tape behind the PCB. That is the most wild thing to me that Razer was like, yeah, we're gonna go tape mod from the factory on our keyboard. It's really cool to see. So that is pretty cool. Then even more foam in the case itself. This also does come again with a magnetic wrist rest similar to that Asus. Awesome to see 
Razer taking notes from the custom keyboard community. Very, very cool. As for colorways, it either comes in black or white, but again, you can fully customize the keycaps and you can even spray paint this keyboard if you want to. Now, switches here are Razer's tactile oranges. Now, they only come with tactiles, at least that's what I believe, but they are pre-lubed from the factory and the switches are by far the best tactile switches Razer has ever made. They don't feel like a switch from Razer and they feel more like a switch from a custom keyboard brand, which is absolutely awesome that a gamer brand like this is just, again, taking more and more from that custom keyboard community because it works. That's what the industry wants at this point. Now the switches have a heavier tactile bump that is pretty immediate. And while for gaming, this is not my favorite as I don't like tactiles for gaming to each their own. If you like tactiles for gaming, go for it. There's no problem with that. But this is obviously hot towel with three and five pin switches. And while yes, that would get expensive, you can put any switch you want in this keyboard and possibly make it the very, very ultimate gaming keyboard for you. Now, one of the things that this has that's gaming specific is an 8,000 hertz polling rate. If you don't know what a polling rate is, it basically means how many times it refreshes. So 1,000 hertz every second versus 8,000 hertz every second, but still crammed in. So the time at which it refreshes each point on your PC will be faster, absolutely. Now, on a keyboard, 8,000 hertz is way overkill. How overkill is 1,000 to 2,000 to 3,000? Well, yes, you will definitely get some benefit. This will absolutely be faster. To what level? I definitely would not buy this keyboard because of the 8,000 hertz pulling rate, but it is nice to know that you will literally have the fastest keyboard in terms of pulling rate like anyone's gonna play on. I don't think there's a faster pulling rate on a keyboard. Now as for keycaps, these are double shot ABS keycaps. The shine through printing is very consistent and looks like a Razer keyboard, which is exactly what you're gonna want if you buy a Razer keyboard. As for the stabilizers, they are plate mounted and are tuned really nicely from the factory. This is pretty uncommon coming again from Razer or a gaming brand, but yeah, they're tuned well. The PCB also supports screw in stabilizers. Who knew? Coming from Razer, but yeah, that's awesome. But yeah, don't take my word for it. A stabilizer and a switches. Take a listen for yourself to the sound test. And that is how the Black Widow V4 sounds. As for connectivity, this is kind of the shocking part. This is non-wireless. This only uses a detachable USB Type-C. For that money, that's a lot of money. But if you're a Razer enthusiast, if you want all the RGB that this keyboard has, if you like the form factor, the scroll wheel, and the overall design of it, which is very different from custom keyboards, as well as that 8,000 hertz pulling rate, you know, this might be worth it for you for sure. But no question it is expensive. But let's talk about that RGB. Well, it's very bright, it's very vibrant. There's tons of modes, colors, perky lighting, RGB, as well as side case link. So it just has RGB on the sides and that looks fantastic. I will say when using and testing out this keyboard, just walking into the room and seeing that RGB on the side of it, it looks very, very good. But with that, let's move on to the number two spot, which is a very special keyboard. This is the Drunk Deer A75. What a ridiculous name. But this comes in at $129.99 with keycaps or $119.99 without keycaps. So you can kind of put your own keycaps on it. This again is a 75% form factor with a two-piece plastic case. Very sturdy build with almost no flex. The metal knob also feels really, really solid with no wobble and it has nice tactile bumps. Moving inside the case here, this has a nice thick metal plate, EVA foam between the plate and the PCB, and then another layer of foam inside the case. This gives a really, really nice sound and overall is really enjoyable to type on but even more enjoyable to game on. Now for colorways, you can either get this in black or white and you can get both of those with or without keycaps. The keycaps are super cheap, but they're also only a $10 add-on but obviously this would look the best and feel the best if you just got your own keycaps and put them on this. However, if you just want the biggest, most impressive part of this keyboard, well, it doesn't really matter. Let's talk about switches because that's what it is. These are Drunk Deer's own magnetic linear switches. These switches here are the reason that you're gonna buy this keyboard. Now, since these are magnetic, you can actually change the actuation. So if you wanna go to the smallest actuation, you can do all the way to 0.4. So that's the quickest actuation which is very, very fast. Your average gaming switch is gonna actuate around one to 1 1.2 millimeters, and that is already a faster switch. So 0.4 is absolutely lightning quick. You're barely touching the key. 
fantastic for gaming. But if you want it to be a slower actuation where you have to press down the key more, you just do that pressing FN2 and then pressing those number keys one through nine. So you can literally change the actuation on the fly. If you wanna type, make it a longer actuation. If you're gaming, set it to that quicker actuation. That is absolutely awesome and for sure making this a amazing option to get. Now, if you wanna customize it for specific keys, which is pretty cool, you can download Drunk Deer software. This is obviously non hot swappable because, well, they're not typical switches here. So you can't swap them out. You're stuck with the switches, but that's also the reason you're getting it. So that's not a problem. But how are the switches themselves? Well, they definitely have some SEM levels similar to a lot of optical switches, but also similar to a lot of optical switches. These are unbelievably smooth. This is amazing for gaming as even when pressing in and out the same W, A, S, and D keys over and over again, there is no scratchy feeling at all. For what these are, these are just about as good as you can ask for, especially at this price point. Now, if you do go with the keycap variant, they are shine through ABS keycaps that have almost no texture to them. They're very, very smooth and honestly, they feel pretty cheap feeling, but it's only a $10 add-on, so we expect that. The stabilizers are plate mounted and are greased and lubed from the factory. The spacebar on my unit has absolutely no rattle. The other stabilizer keys like the shift, enter, backspace, those do have maybe a very slight tick, but overall very, very good. Especially for a gaming keyboard, you're not gonna have any issues with that. But don't take my word for it, take a listen to the sound test. And that is how the Drunk Deer A75 sounds. What a ridiculous name, but it's a good keyword, okay? All right, for connectivity, this is wired only with a detachable USB Type-C. RGB here is super bright. Tons of colors, tons of modes, perky lighting. It's very vibrant, everything you can want. And if you do want to get some really cool shine through, or maybe even like pudding style translucent keycaps, yeah, go for it, man. Now, before we jump into the number one spot, we have an honorable mention that it was really hard for me not to put on the list because I think it's a great keyboard. This is the Kizzy K75 Pro, coming in at a price tag of $119.99. This again is a 75% form factor. This has a few extras, like a USB hub with an extra USB Type-C and USB Type-A when you use this in wired mode, as well as a rolling wheel to change connection modes and a small screen that shows the battery percentage and it's dedicated to that which is awesome as for the case this is a two-piece plastic shell with unique angles and cutouts this is also gasket mounted with tons of dampening silicone dampening pad and a layer of foam in the case then a switch dampener pad and pour on foam between the polycarbonate plate and pcb and like you do all of that and you're like wow that's really really great and it is this is one of the best sounding keyboards on the list in fact i think it's the second but obviously that is personal preference but this sounds really really great obviously less important when gaming but yeah, now for colors, there are a ton. There's like an arcade games color, which is one that I have, gray knight, lemon green. You get the idea. Check the links below if you want to check out the colors. Now, as for switches, these are Kizzy's own switches. You either have a choice between moment linear and eternity tactiles. I like the names a lot. I always prefer linears for gaming, so I got the moment linears. They are pre-lubed and feel pretty smooth with definitely some noticeable scratchiness, but still very impressive for a gaming keyboard. This is also fully hot swappable with three and five pin switches and guys has south facing LEDs. So for a lot of you, this might be one of the best keyboards on the list. I personally absolutely love it and it might even be the keyword that I get, but at the end of the day, I have to pick the ones that I think most people are gonna buy. So that's why this is an honorable mention. But for more keyboard enthusiast style people, this one might be really, really good. For keycaps, these are double shot PBT keycaps. They're not shine through. They do have a texture to them. The stabilizers here are plate mounted and looped from a factory and stock. These sound great with no ticks or rattles, but don't take my word for it. Take a listen to this sound test.
And that is how it sounds. Now for connectivity, this can be used in either wired with a detachable USB type C or wireless with either Bluetooth 5.0 or wireless with a 2.4 gigahertz USB dongle. And that again has a 3750 milliamp hour battery similar to the Royal Kludge. As for the RGB here, it's nice and vibrant RGB, tons of modes, colors, per key lighting, everything you'd expect from a gaming keyboard. But guys, with that, let's move on to the number one best gaming keyboard unbelievable value is the Techware Phantom 87 Elite, coming in at a price tag of only $79.99. Even at that price point, this directly competes with every single keyboard on this list. And because of that price tag and the fact that if I was gonna buy one of these keyboards, this is the keyboard I would buy. Well, it's in the number one spot. This is a TKL form factor, which is one of my favorite form factors. The Phantom Elite's build quality is immense here. This is the second gen Phantom 87, and they really perfected what was already almost perfect before. And then the Elite adds in a bunch of other things that are awesome, like a removable skirt and well, so much other stuff. So let's talk about it. This has a very solid top metal plate with a nice texture a single piece plastic shell that has these modern looking hexagonal edges. However, where the build quality excels is inside of the board. This has two layers of foam between the plate and the PCB. In, in that price point of a keyboard, that, that's impressive. In the case, it follows suit here, having two more layers of foam. Not only this, but this also adds rubber dampeners for the spacebar stabilizer. And all of this not only adds to the more expensive feel and rigidity, but also the sound, which is more on the level of custom keyboards than budget keyboards, which this is kind of in that budget keyboard price point, but it it is the best, it is the single best sounding on the list. And you'll see that with a sound test. It is surprisingly good. Highly impressive, and you can tell that the designers at Techware take their time, they love what they're doing, and they put their heart and soul into it, and it shows here. You can't make this by accident. As for colorways, you can either get this in black or white, and it's kind of that, you know, has slightly different colors, which looks nice, makes it a little bit more premium. Now, the switches here are very impressive, and this is the part where Techware is able to get that price point in a very affordable price. I mean, legitimately, Techware should increase the price. It, like, they do such a good job, and honestly, you could sell this for 120, and it would still be very, very worth it. So, the switches here are Techware's own switches. You can either choose between Wraith Brown or Orange, which are tactiles, or Red or Pink, which are linears. These all come pre-lubed, and I was overall very, very impressed with the quality of these switches. For the price, this is insane value. So, the linears are very smooth overall with some scratchiness, but not a grainy feeling scratchiness. More of a very, very fine scratchiness. If you've ever felt a Kale Speed Silver switch, this has very grainy scratchiness, which is pretty bad. Like, that's what you don't want. However, these have more fine scratchiness, and this could probably be totally eliminated by just hand lubing these switches yourself, which is kind of a DIY project you might want to do in the future. However, out of the box, these are quite good, especially for gaming, and the sound that comes from these is very impressive. And lastly, this is fully hot swappable, but only with three pin switches. So if you have five pin switches, you're gonna have to clip them. Now as for keycaps, these have a really good shine through. Don't forget, this is still definitely a gaming keyboard. They have a slight texture to them. They're very good overall, fantastic stabilizer tuning and tone, and a really good feel for gaming. But don't take my word for it, take a listen to the sound test, and keep in mind, this is $79.99. Take a listen. And that is how it sounds, a pretty freaking shocking. Now for connectivity, because this is the Elite, you can either use this with a detachable USB Type-C, wireless with Bluetooth 5.0, or a 2.4 gigahertz USB dongle. As for the battery size, it is a little bit smaller here at 2,500 milliamps, but it still has a very long battery life, especially if RGB is off in wireless. Still very, very impressive. Now for the RGB, it is super bright here. Tons of colors, tons of modes, obviously perky lighting, it's very vibrant. You have all the static colors you'd want and all the modes you'd want and, and I do mean all the colors. It literally has all the colors without having to go into a software, which is very, very impressive. Again, if you wanna check out any of the five or six keywords with that honorable mention, there's Amazon links below for the US, UK, Canada, and international links, but take a listen to the back-to-back -back sound test of all six keyboards. Take a listen.